check, check. Good, that's all set. Okay, set, 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 set. Okay, we're good to go. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Charlie McDermott. I'm an artist and a teacher. I have taught at Brooks Middle School for about 15 years now, and this year we are fully remote. So I wanted to in invite you into my home today so that you could see how wonderfully this remote learning has been going for me and my students. I normally put in two or three days a week at school, and then the other days I work here at home. I have a completely mobile studio. Um, you can see it's packed with lots of different things that I use for teaching. I've got two different computers that I'm using, several mobile devices, complete with tripods, um, and that's just to get the Zoom session going. That's just to teach. That's not to mention all the other tools and supplies that I might need to teach about, the thing that we're gonna learn for the day. I use each device for unique purposes and sometimes for multiple purposes. I have one computer that I use as my home base. This is my headquarters for my Zoom session. But then I have a couple of other multiple devices that I am Zooming my own Zoom where I can do a myriad of different things with that as well. Um, I can hear the entire performance and see what the kids are seeing. That's super important for me to make a performance go really well for every class session. I can use a mobile device here as a document camera. I can follow the chat and sort of see them on these screens and then as well as screen share anything that I want to from my home computer. Now when we get into film and photography I can also use one of these mobile devices to do a screen share to show mobile pathways for when we do that film and photography. Then I have another computer over here on the side, which is not part of the Zoom, but this one I can do for taking attendance and I can check the work as they turn things in and submit them in. I can check them live in the moment, send them direct feedback. Um, it's a really cool setup and it works really well for me so far. It's important for me to have all of this going to create a really dynamic and rich experience for the kids because it's such a loud and crazy culture out there. I know what my competition is and I know what I've got to do to keep, get the kids engaged and keep them engaged throughout an entire lesson. People have asked me a lot of times, like, how do you actually teach art online? Like, how does that work? Well, let me show you. This is definitely not the art class that you had when you were growing up. We have moved on from drawing and painting, and we were kind of a little bit forced to, to do it as we went along. Like, look at all this paint behind me. We didn't touch it at all this year. When we're doing remote learning, most of it becomes digital. But let me show you some of the amazing things that my students were able to pull off. The project that I'm doing with my kids right now is in 3D design and drawing. My students are learning how to take a pencil, a ruler, and a piece of paper and create highly dynamic and fully illusionary objects on a piece of paper. Artists at the middle school level, they want to be able to draw realistically like adults can. And so this drawing unit called Perspective is really engaging for them to be able to feel very, very skilled in the art of drawing. The unit is packed with lots of cross-content materials, specifically things in math, dealing with planes, solids, parallels, intersections, all kinds of geometry. But we put it in real practical applications so that they can not just learn the concepts, but actually see the results. So on the very first day of 3D drawing, I asked the kids, hey, what do you know about 3D drawing? Show me. And these were the typical results that I received on the first day. We went from this to this, and this, and on, and on, and on, and on, and on. I have been amazed with the accuracy, the precision, the kinds of drawings that these students have been submitting to me has just been jaw-dropping and so inspiring to me as a teacher. When it came time to grade, I felt like my mind was just gonna explode. And I kind of felt like Oprah Winfrey sitting there saying, you get an A, you get an A, you get an A. What I found through this though, is that our kids are extremely resilient and they're thirsty. They're thirsty for knowledge, they're thirsty for engagement. They really want to participate and make things really well. Despite all of the state of affairs that might be happening inside of their homes and everything else that's going outside of all of our doors right now in culture, these students are coming to my class ready to participate and ready to create great things. And after having all that fun and doing such a wonderful job with their 3D drawings, we moved into the realm of 3D printing. With 3D printing, they weren't confined to a paper and a pencil. 
In fact, they had a full three-dimensional realm on their Chromebooks. And boy, did they unleash their creativity. The technology of 3D printing is a pretty amazing one that has just been introduced into our culture in the past several years. I taught myself how to do it, and now I'm teaching my students how to do it. Now this is a super cool project where the kids are designing on their Chromebooks uh, using a platform called Tinkercad, where they can manipulate three-dimensional uh, shapes and forms to create objects that can be printed on a 3D printer. Now, some of the things that the kids came up with for this design are some functional objects, such as this, which is intended to be able to hold a phone on display. Um, also, little containers and characters, like this one, or like this one. Uh, we also had students do things to help organize their desk spaces and charge some of their mobile devices and things like that, uh, as well as create characters from their favorite movies and video games. Some extraordinary results from my students in creating right on their Chromebooks some three-dimensional designs which we printed out right on Brooks's 3D printer. This is an incredibly exciting project and highly dynamic and purposeful for today's culture. 3D printing is having a big impact on worldwide manufacturing purposes and now all of my students know how to design for a 3D printer. And we didn't even stop there. We just kept going and going and going. The students had wonderful examples created in creating logos for a imaginary business that they might run someday. They were also creating covers for different purposes such as magazine covers, music album covers, or book covers, as well as YouTube thumbnails. In this way, the kids learn really functional ways on how to market and publicize services or products that they might push out in their future life. We also got into all kinds of photography, animations, and video making. One of my favorite projects for the entire semester was when I taught my students how to create transparent background images. Now this was so much fun for me because on Zoom, in a lot of cases, my students do not leave their cameras on. But what I asked them to do was take a picture of themselves and remove the entire background and place them in a new setting. We're not able to travel around much these days, but this allowed us to travel somewhere digitally, and man, did they do a great job on this one. Not only that did they create such amazing, amazing artworks through this process, but I was able to look at my students. And so to wrap up this transparent background image project, what we did with it was I asked them to take all of them in our class and create a group photo. This was one of the most meaningful projects for me because I could actually lay eyes on all of my students at one time. And we had a group photo. It was a wonderful experience and brought us all closer together as a community to see each other together in that way. Film and photography to me is one of the most essential things that we could be teaching students these days. There is no better way to express yourselves in our day and age than through film media. Anything that needs to be learned or taught is best done through film these days. Think about this. When was the last time that you went to the library to check out a book to learn how to do something? You do what I do. I go to YouTube, look it up, and learn whatever I want to learn. And if you want to participate in the culture, then you have to know film media yourself. And now my students have the knowledge and the skills to be able to participate in this culture by expressing themselves through film media. We created what I like to refer to as an animated gift around Christmas time, and that was in making Google Classroom banners for their teachers. The students created animations using Google Slides for teachers to be able to put up in their Google Classrooms. Since we are all working remotely and Google Classroom was our home base for most of us, this was a wonderful way for the kids to use their creativity and share it with the staff that have helped them so much during these days. The staff gave a wonderful response to the students. Many of them put up these images right in their Google Classroom, right in that moment. GIFs are an amazingly powerful means of communication in our culture these days, used for communication and humor. We finished our film and photo unit looking at the perfect loop. This is an animated GIF that starts where it stops. Perfect loops appear to have no clear end and no clear beginning. They loop indefinitely it's a long sought after movie magic technique that many TikTokers, influencers, photographers, filmmakers, and artists alike have always sought to how to create the perfect loop. 
And this is what my kids did with it. These are absolutely wonderful examples. I wish I could show them all to you, but we don't have the time to do that. If you look at the costume changes, the animations, all of the creativity that was added in to make these loops incredibly dynamic. My students had so much fun doing drawing to start our unit that around Christmas time they wanted to go back to it again. And so we spent some time with me teaching them how to draw holiday characters around Christmas time. Their results were wonderful. And many of them were amazed at what they were able to accomplish. What I hope that they learned through all of this is that there are no secrets left. There's nothing that they can't learn. All they have to do is open their minds to the possibility that if they try, they can do it. I invited you on this journey today to share with me the triumphs of my students. They have shown a spirit that says that they just won't give up. Time and time again, they have inspired me to become a better teacher. And it has been a wild ride but filled with lots of fun. And they have created things of such beauty, and maybe that's exactly what the world needs right now. And now here we are in the second semester. Kids are back in school, and kids are now walking back through my door. It's amazing to have them back with me, but through all this struggle, people have said, you know, just think of the things that we lost in all that time in remote. And I wanted to share with you some of the things that we gained. Never lose sight that with a little bit of perseverance, a little bit of integrity, and a little bit of ingenuity, we can do great things together even despite hardships.